Hey everyone, in this video I will be demonstrating how to do a VOR DME standard instrument departure. We'll be using this Beechcraft Baron and we'll be doing the flight out of Napier, New Zealand. So the first thing we'll look at are the main instruments uh, you'll need to do a VOR DME standard instrument departure. So the first one is the VOR, VOR number two, and the DME. Now, uh, VOR stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional uh, Radio Range. Uh, being very high frequency, it means that it is line of sight, which means that you have to have a clear and direct line of sight from the aircraft to the VOR navigational aid uh, for the instrument to actually work. Next one is DME, stands for Distance Measuring Equipment. First part on it, it gives us uh, distance, and that's um, nautical miles. Um, to or from the DME. Then we have speed, so that tells us how fast in knots the aircraft is flying, and that only works if we're flying directly to or directly from uh, the DME. And the last one is time, and that just tells us in minutes how long um, it's going to take us to get to the aid or how far away we are um, flying from the aid. Um, so nav one over here. Um, this is what we use to put the frequency in to get our VOR and DME going. So I'll put 113.8 um, into the VOR, sorry, into the NAV frequency, and that gets our VOR and DME working. And this aircraft, they're both connected, so all you got to do is put that frequency in and they both start going. NAV2, same thing, 113.8, and all NAV2 does is gets our uh, VOR number 2 going. Alright, so to do our standard instrument departure, we're going to need our departure plate. So we've got our Napier departure plate here, and we'll need to brief it to make sure we've got the right plate. So Napier SID runway 16, that's correct. Category A, B, and C. This aircraft is a category B aircraft. Elevation 6 feet, and the plate is effective the 28th of May 2015, so we've got the right date. First thing we'll do is we'll go through all departures. So, number one, minimum net climb gradient of 3.3% unless higher stated. So to work this out for our aircraft, we need to use the uh, rate of climb table. So it is here, so um, our plate tells us 3.3%, so we'll find 3.3%, which is there. And uh, in the Beechcraft Baron, we climb at about 110 knots, so we'll find that um, underneath ground speed, which is there. And we'll work our way down from 110 and across from 3.3%, which is between 333 and 400 feet per minute. And so we have to interpolate, and if we interpolate, we should get about 367 feet per minute. And that's the minimum um, rate of climb that we uh, have to do for this departure. Next part on our all departures is mandatory turn altitude of 1,000 feet. And what's that saying is that at 1,000 feet, we must uh, turn. And you can look at the um, three departures um, below all departures. And you'll see in the little diagrams that it's got the number 1,000 with a line below and a line above it. And what that's saying is you must turn at 1,000 feet. Uh, next bit on our all departures is evaluate a climb sector within 25 nautical miles in sector radial 005 to radial 200. Um, that doesn't apply to us for the departure we'll be doing. We're going to be doing the 16 mic 3 departure, um, so we'll be turning away from um, those sectors. Uh, for all climb gradients, did it apply from takeoff? So that 3.3% um, that we worked out before, uh, that uh, rate of climb. Uh, 367 feet per minute, we have to um, climb at a minimum of that from takeoff. Uh, next bit, ATC requirement, H24, all flights cleared at 11,000 feet or above, maintain 10,000 feet to 30 napier. Uh, it's just saying that um, through all tw um, 24 hours of the day, all flights cleared at 11,000 feet or above, they must maintain 10,000 feet to 30 miles um, from napier. For this departure, I've decided that we want to go to Opapa. So I've picked the only departure that goes to Opapa uh, from my 1.6, and that is 16 Mike 3 departure. 
So we'll go through and brief uh, the specific departure. So first thing is minimum net climb gradient, 4.4% uh, to MSA, stands for uh, minimum safe altitude, to Genda or Moose, or 3.9% to MSA to Ruihi, Nosam, or Apati. Uh, we're not going to any of those places, so that 3.3% from the old departures section still applies to us. And then the last instruction is turn right, intercept trek, and we get this little diagram um, that shows us what we're doing. So climbing straight out to a thousand feet and then making a right hand turn. To get a better picture of what we're doing, I've got my IFR chart here. And so we've got Napier here, and that's where the uh, VOR DME navigational aid sits. And we're going to be flying to Opapa, which is here, and it's on a track of 181. So we'll be climbing straight up to 1,000 feet. At 1,000 feet, we'll make our right-hand turn to intercept our track of 181, and then we'll carry on flying out to Opapa. All right, we're sitting on runway 16 now at Napier, and uh, first thing we're going to set up is the Q&H. So we need to make sure we've got the right Q&H set. It's very important when we're flying IFR, especially in IMC conditions. Next thing is we're going to find the VOR frequency um, to set the VOR up. So we're going to put 113.8 into our nav frequency and we're going to listen out for the Morse code. So we're listening out for that. There we go, that matches up. And now we're going to test our VOR, checking for full-scale deflection, making sure that the instrument does work properly. And then we're going to select uh, the track that we want in our VOR. So I've just lined it up with our runway heading. And same thing for VOR number two. That matches up. And now we're going to test VOR number two. Full scale deflection, both sides. And I've selected the heading we want. And you can see we've got the from flag there, indicating that we are moving from the VOR, which is correct because the VOR is directly behind us. All right, just making sure that all the instruments are set. Everything looks good. Checking the DME, making sure that Nav 1 and Nav 2 are reading the same thing. Alright, and we appear to be good to go. So, smoothly increasing power. Temperatures and pressures are all on the green. There's 80 knots. Rotate. Positive rate of climb, gear up. Alright, and what we're doing at the moment is just climbing out on runway heading up to a thousand feet before we make our right hand turn. So trying to keep the uh, plane and the heading bug aligned. approaching a thousand feet now so we need to set 181 into our VOR. So dialing up 181 into VOR number one and turning our heading bug to intercept that track of 181. Usually we want to do about a 30 degree cut. I did a 20 degree cut. The closer you are to the VOR the more sensitive it is. Um, I probably could have done a 30 degree cut for this. Probably should have. Um, and then we also want that VOR number two uh, set up, which I've just done. All right, and all we're doing at the moment is just flying this heading, waiting for the uh, CDI, that little needle there that's starting to move, to move back in towards the um, whole needle. We need to anticipate uh, when to turn so that we don't overshoot uh, our track. 
And I'm going to start my turn now to intercept our track. So because uh, our uh, needle was off to the, or the middle of the needle was off to the right, we need to turn to the right to intercept that. So that middle bit of the needle is like our track. And all we're doing now is carrying on the climb on a track of 1812 Opapa, trying to get above MSA before we level off. And if we look behind us, we can see we are flying away from Napier, away from that VOR. And if we look back at our VOR number two, we still have that from flag indicating that we are flying from the Napier VOR. Here's a map showing what we did. So I've climbed out to 1,000 feet, made that right hand turn to intercept track 181, and followed the track um, out towards Opapa. So pretty similar to what the plate diagram showed us and what we um, created on the IFR chart.